Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Portland School District Podcast. We are live here in the Town Tech Educational Podcast Studio with our superintendent of schools, Dr. Charles Britton, and this is going to be episode number 18. So, Charles, how are you this morning? Dave, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me back again. Well, thanks for coming down. That's excellent. So I understand we have some some new news as far as that's going to uh, hopefully be rolled out in the district. Oh, boy. Yes. Uh, lo- lots of new new news. People who are, are following um, press releases and a- aware of things that are happening um, are, are aware of some pretty major changes with respect to the, the ongoing pandemic. And, and I hope the way I would be able to frame this for everybody is that, that we may be nearing the off-ramp. Right? That's I mean, a good thing. That, yes. Um, I've been in lots of conversations with um, state officials and other superintendents, and, and the word um, pandemic off ramp is now being being used. Well, that's um, good. And and uh, part of what I'm going to talk about today is is what I hope will be that off ramp. Sure. Right. And um, with that, you know, comes a certain recognition that that uh, this has been an ongoing, very challenging year for for a lot of our our families and our students and our faculty. And staff. Actually, almost two years. <laughs> almost two years. Right. Um, and you know, it's. We've weathered the storm as well as we can here in Portland. Sure. Um, it has not gone perfect. Nothing ever does. Uh, but I think we, we've done um, a, a, a pretty darn good job. And, Absolutely. And, you know, that we're closing in on the end of this, I hope, um, is, is a signal to, to all of us that, that all of that, that good work was for a reason and we're all still here and some of us are healthy and, and you know, most, most of us are, are, are doing well. So we're, sure. we're closing in on the end here. Sure. So um, last Thursday, uh, the, the, the governor came out and announced a new approach to quarantining students called Screen and Stay. Okay. Um, and I want to talk with everybody a little bit about what that is, what it means, and, and, and how that will be rolled out here in, in Portland. Okay. So just a little bit of context. Um, at this point, I think every family in our town between last year and this year has been affected by a quarantine. You know, my, my daughter and my son have both been quarantined. My daughter has been quarantined three times um, okay. in her school district in, in Wallingford. And um, most of our families know that if um, a student is determined to be a close contact of a positive COVID case, um, they're subject to a quarantine period. Now it is uh, either 10 full days with no test right. or seven days with a negative test after the fifth day. Okay. Right? So just to give you some of the numbers, um, what, we were look- what we've looked realized here in Portland is that so far this year, uh, 59 Portland high school students, uh, 93 Portland middle school students, 103 Brownstone intermediate school students, 65 Gildersleeve students and 68 Valley View students have been subject to quarantine periods. Okay. That's a total of 388 of our students. That's a uh, fair amount. That's a large number. Sure. sure. And um, we're a small district. Let's yes. Um, now, these are students that are, are uh, not vaccinated, right? So if, if, you, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to quarantine. Um, and fortunately, all of our faculty and staff, except for a small number, are, are um, vaccinated and they don't have to quarantine. So we don't okay. have met any of our uh, faculty and staff that have been quarantined. We have had some of our faculty and staff test positive, but they would be isolating, not quarantining. Correct. So that's 388 of our families that um, have been affected by quarantine periods. And um, I'm a parent, and I know that when your children are, are quarantined, especially if they're young and not able to stay home alone, it's a it's an incredible challenge yes. right, for for our families um, that, that are are subject to having to now care for children who are, are home during quarantine. And of course, it disrupts teaching and learning. Now we have a, a program to support students who are in quarantine. You know, teachers are still communicating with them, inviting them into classes, um, uh, but it's not the same, of course, right, as, right. as being in, in school. So a, a lot right. of the superintendents across the state, including me, have been pointing out that one of the things we found is that we're not seeing a lot of in-school transmission of COVID. Mm-hmm. So of these 388 students who are quarantined, they're not testing positive during that course of quarantine, indicating that there's in-school transmission. Now, 
complete transparency. That changed a little bit last week when complete transparency, we believe we have one case of in-school transmission that occurred during a chorus class. But that's one out of 388. Correct, yep. Mm -hmm. So we've been out there sharing this, this data, this information with the uh, Department of Public Health and other uh, officials, both appointed and elected. And you know, in terms of, hey, maybe it's time to ease up on the large number of quarantines so we can keep more students in school. In school, yeah. One of the first suggestions, and I think they tried this in Massachusetts, was a program called Test and Stay. Okay. So that if a student was a close contact of a known positive, they would test regularly during the quarantine, but still be able to come to school. Uh huh. I think that was considered um, by uh, officials, but very quickly realized that th that testing capacity necessary to do that um, would outreach, outstretch the resources of testing that are available. Okay. Just uh -huh. put that in context. Sure. Portland's a tiny school district. Yes. We've had 388 students quarantined. And that's probably the same number or percentage as every other school district in the state. Mm -hmm. That's thousands and thousands of students statewide that would need to test regularly as part of a test and stay protocol. Uh -huh. So I think it was quickly realized that the testing capacity, while robust, isn't robust enough for us to explore those numbers. Right. Test and stay. Sure. So what we heard from uh, Governor Lamont last week, and of course, we just got the guidelines and I was in a call at 11 o'clock or 8 o'clock this morning. Um, learning more is, is a program called Screen and Stay, where in certain pretty narrow circumstances, mm -hmm. if a student is a close contact and they're eligible for Screen and Stay, they could come to school, but we would ask parents at home to monitor students for sign and sim symptoms of COVID, screen them every yeah. morning, uh -huh. and if they exhibit any sign or symptom of COVID, stay home. Keep them home, right. yeah. So this is another arrow in our quiver of, of um, approaches that we could consider, that we will consider uh, during the contact tracing process that our nurses and school administrators and Russ Melman from the Chatham Health District does whenever we receive a report of a positive case. Sure. Now, I have the, the, the guidelines here in front of me, and I'm, I'm going to share these with the community and the Board of Education. Um, and I want to go over what these are with everybody because they're nuanced. Sure. Um, they're, 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 they're relatively narrow, but they are applicable to the school setting in these circumstances. Uh -huh. So a student would be eligible for screen and stay if unvaccinated. If they're vaccinated, they don't have to quarantine at all. Okay. But if they're unvaccinated or partially vaccinated, they would be eligible for screen and stay if the contact occurred during the school day. Okay. So if okay. it occurred at extracurricular activities or social contact outside of school, it wouldn't apply. But if the contact occurred during the school day, it would. If the contact was indoors or on a school bus or other transportation, and both the contact and the positive case were masked during the exposure. So if masks are on, then student would be eligible for screen and stay. If masks were off, not eligible for screen and stay. If outdoors, masked or unmasked, but being supervised. Uh -huh. So at recess, you know, our students take their masks off and run around and get fresh air. And as long as there are adults present, which there always are, keeping an eye on those students and making sure that, you know, they're not completely on top of each other or otherwise right. you know, roughhousing okay. in some way, then, then they, that would still be a, an okay sc uh, screen and stay opportunity. And, of course, the most important one, that the close contact remains asymptomatic. Okay. Right? So if, if uh, what would happen was parents would be notified of the contact, provided information about the screen and stay protocol, and then asked, carefully monitor your students, and if they exhibit any sign or symptom of COVID, please stay home. Okay. So let me keep going here. So I, I do want to talk about cases of, of contact scenarios that would not be eligible for screen and stay. It, it, in these cases, students would still be expected to quarantine for the seven days with a negative test after five. One, 
contact with a case during interscholastic or athletic activities. Uh -huh. So if it's during a sports event, it's, it's a, still a quarantine moment for the upper unvaccinated athletes. Contact occurring during social interactions or similar activities outside of school, for example, birthday parties, dining out, sleepovers, team pasta parties, whatever it might be, still subject to quarantine. Contacts where the, the case or contact is not consistently or correctly wearing a mask indoors and six feet of distance is not maintained. That's an important one here. So if the mask is off during students eating snack and the contact occurred or during lunch and the contact occurred and the students were closer than six feet, they would be subject to the quarantine. Okay. So that six feet of distance applies here. Next one would be household contacts. For example, the contact lives with the case of a positive individual. That would still be quarantine, not screen and stay. And the contact cannot consistently or correctly wear a mask and cannot perform daily symptom screenings. So those would all be um, instances where um, individuals would not be eligible for screen and stay. Okay. Now, um, in order to remain in the screen and stay protocol, we would be asking um, unvaccinated or that, uh, partially vaccinated people to affirm that they've reviewed the requirements for screen and stay uh, and commit to screening for symptoms for 14 days while the student attends school. And it would only apply to in-person learning. Quarantine would still go into place for athletics, extracurriculars, and activities outside of school. Um, and then, of course, if an individual is in the screen and stay protocol, we would ask them to limit, limit aerosol generating activities, specifically playing instruments, singing in chorus, projecting speech, um, or other uh, otherwise, you know, spreading uh -huh. drop, droplets. Sure. Right. So those are the, the guidelines for it. What I'm a little nervous about and, and just want to make everybody aware of is that here's what will happen now. Our nurses will still do the contact tracing and they'll call parents and and in consultation with Russ Melmid, the Chatham Health District Director, make a determination about the mask wearing compliance, whether it was six feet, the other circumstances surrounding the contact, and tell the parent whether they're eligible for screen and stay or not. Okay. So there might be cases where a known contact positive enters the school and certain students are eligible for screen and stay and certain students need to quarantine right? In those cases, I suspect that the parents whose students need to quarantine and aren't eligible for the screen and stay might be disappointed. Okay. And it's just going to take some understanding and some discussion as we explain that screen and stay isn't a panacea. Right, right. It's not for everybody. It's sure. in certain circumstances that we can do it per the guidelines. And that might, of course, open up some difficult conversations with folks who otherwise right don't want their children to have to stay home for the quarantine period. And, and I understand, and I'll, I will uh, proactively apologize in those cases and, and right. hopefully explain that you know, we, the guidelines call for quarantine periods in certain circumstances. Uh -huh. Now, that said, there's a big caveat to this. I'll remind everybody that for individuals who are fully vaccinated, quarantine is not necessary. Okay. We would have, at the high school, middle school level, probably had double the number of students who are quarantined this year, except that our 11 to 18 population, 12 to 18 population, can be vaccinated. And many, 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 the majority of our students at this point have been vaccinated. Right. So if you're a parent and you want to avoid quarantine for your children, get them vaccinated. Okay. Yeah. Now, at this point, everybody knows that on um, this Friday, what is the date Friday? Today's the... 12th, I 12th. believe. Yeah, November 12th at Portland Middle School. The yep. Chatham Health District is going to run a um, age 5 to 11 clinic. Vaccination. And, right. Vaccination clinic is here in, in town. And you don't have to register. You just show up. We'll regi the, the Chatham Health District will register you here uh -huh. and get your kids their shots. Sure. So the way I understand the childhood vaccine, and my daughter will be here with me, that it will be shot one Friday. Three weeks from Friday, shot two. Uh -huh. Two weeks from Friday, full vaccinated status. Which yes. Is before the holidays, first of all. Sure. 
So if you choose this Friday to avail yourself of the vaccine, the quarantine and screen and stay possibility will only exist for five more weeks of your children's life. There you go. Wait, so there, Dave, I started talking about a, a, a pandemic off-ramp. Yep. There is the off-ramp. There you go. Right. As soon as we can say our eligible population, except for preschool, which is a carve out here, but five weeks from this Friday, our grades K through six students yep. should be fully vaccinated mm -hmm. for parents who choose to have their children vaccinated. And all of this won't matter anymore. There you go. Because we're done. Sure. Now, as far as the vaccination for the uh, up to up to 11, now the, the vaccination dose is half the uh, the dose of uh, an adult dose. So that's that hence the uh, the two the two vaccinations. Correct. Co correct. Yeah. And, and I would, would would certainly defer to, you know, Russ or or experts in, in the size of the dose and, and all of those. Right. Right. You know, I don't I can't speak definitively about that. But okay. I, I, I what what do I know from a practical sure point of view is that I'm delighted that the the vaccines are approved we're offer the we're, there is a, a a clinic being offered in district on Friday so Friday I count 5 weeks forward and and to me that's the off ramp okay and, you know that's the destination on the highway that we're going down and you see that 15 that's miles it. to whatever exit where yep. you're getting off and starting your vacation right are we there yet are, are we, we there, there yet, yet? <laughs> right As, <laughs> this is me in the back seat asking my parents as a driver are we there yet right to me i we just went by that mile marker on the highway okay and i'm looking ahead instead of 15 miles five weeks there you go and and that's the off now going back to the to the screen and stay now uh, one of the scenarios you um, as far as an, an in school exposure how would that be determined would that student go to the nurse's office or how, you know uh, to determine whether they need to screen and stay or yep. a, an exposure yeah so what what happens now is our, our nurses are notified either by the parents or by the Chatham Health District of a positive case okay right, so. Whether it's somebody who's symptomatic and tests or gets a positive result, that okay. those results are reported to the health district. And if it's a student, they're reported to us. But more likely than not, you know, 99% of the time, the parents will call the school and say, I'm sorry to tell you, my child has COVID, right? When that happens, what the nurses do is, and it's a very labor-intensive process and takes a lot of time. Yeah. Um, Start looking at bus lists and seating charts and interviewing the, the individuals and, and asking questions about where they were during the day and where, are they on teams after school and what, sure. what was the vaccination status of that individual and the individuals around them. And it's an enormous protocol that's kind of like doing a mini investigation. All right, yeah. And based on that, they generate a, a list of names of individuals who were close contacts. Okay. If the individual who was a close contact is vaccinated... There are no, no change to their life. Okay. If the individual was not vaccinated or partially vaccinated, that's when we would say you start your quarantine period. And from the date of exposure, count forward five days, yep. get tested on the fifth day. If that test comes back negative, two days later, you're back in school. Okay. Um, and that's, that's the protocol sure. um, that the uh, Department of Public Health and the um, State Department of Education have provided us. Great. Okay. So now you're, um, if I'm understanding you correct, you're, you're bringing this to the Board of Ed tonight, correct? Correct. Today's Tuesday. Okay. So um, if people are hearing this, it will, will likely be after tonight's meeting. I'm uh, R R Russ Melman is joining me at the, at the board tonight and, okay. and talking about this. It, yeah, um, it's taken us some time to you know get the guidelines and read them and understand them. We, yep. We've done that. Yep. Uh, we, we're working with the nurses now and, and you know, this screen and stay, I, I look at it as another arrow in the quiver. That, sure. we, that we can use in, yep. in, in these, these circumstances that we're allowed to continue to allow kids to stay in school for what I, again, I go back, I hope will be only five weeks. Yeah. Because uh -huh. you know, that's the, the mile marker. That's the off ramp. Sure. In yep. five weeks from now, our children ages five through 18 mm -hmm. are eligible for vaccination. And if everybody gets vaccinated, hey, that's it. No more quarantining. There you go. <laughs> of these, no more of these. I'm, I'm hoping that we're keeping track of these numbers that 
that number 388 may go up a little bit more between now and and five weeks from now Uh but i'm hoping that number goes to zero after that after that sure because even if we had a positive person enter the school nobody around them would have to stay home correct because we've all got our shot Uh, vaccinations correct get the shot absolutely yep well, that that's that's good news, Charles. That's that's excellent news. It's, I just described the off ramp. It, it's yeah, great news. It, it right? is there. Yeah. It is there. And uh, again, we're coming up on a mile marker. And uh, the, the key is obviously, uh, you know, uh, with, with the advancements of the uh, the vaccinations of for for the younger kids now. That's that's huge. That's very huge. Okay. Um, so you're you're going to be at the. Uh, uh, clinic on Friday. I will be. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Russ Melman has meet, reached out to me in the town tech program. So, and asking us to do a, uh, a 60 second PSA. Okay. So we're going to be shooting some footage, uh, at that there. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be talking to you and I'll probably be talking Great. to your daughter. Great, yeah. Okay. Is in relation to, so I'll have you sign the, uh, the uh, consent form, the sure. consent form for the waiver, so we can get you uh, uh, on camera and on the news. Oh as, boy! As far as that goes, uh, you know, we'll, we'll make you a star. I, I have a face for radio, Dave. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You and me both. Uh, I hear you. I hear it. Well, that's that's great news, Charles. That is that is awesome news, and uh, you know, hopefully the the board will support that tonight. Um, you know, at the uh, board of ed meeting, and uh, and again, I think uh, Russell, uh, uh, I think explain things like he always does, uh, you know, uh, to the nth degree, because um, he he really has his stuff together uh, as far as that goes and has been a, a tremendous uh, resource to not only Portland, but the, the rest of the uh, the Chatham Health District right. as far as infectious diseases. So great. Um, also, we have some news as far as in relation to um, the DECA program here at the high school. Okay, and uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the DECA program is a, uh, a business club up at the high school. So uh, I know they reached out to you on uh, uh, one of their initiatives that, that they'd like to uh, uh, float uh, in the community. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's really interesting. You know, and boy, I'm, I'm looking forward to going down the off ramp. So when we have these podcasts, we can talk about things other than COVID. Won't that be wonderful? <laughs> Um, but this is a really neat one, and, and one of our, our students, Philip Lachane, asked me to share this with the community. Um, DECA is our business club here, uh-huh. um, and every oh, this is a, a Ethical Leadership Month. Uh-huh. So DECA is going to be sharing messages with the community um, over the announcements and, and, of course, over our social media presence about what it means to be an ethical leader, right? And, and um, I think that's, that's a wonderful initiative. You know, sure. That, that um, you, you know the leadership, is, uh, of course, in my experience, is about engendering relationships. Sure. And, and uh, relate the the foundation of of any healthy relationship is trust. Right? Mm-hmm. And and um, I think in most cases, people understand the challenges of leadership and, and are willing to give you lots of leeway when you make mistakes. Sure. But part of that. That means owning up to them and, and, and recognizing them and being reflective and being honest and transparent um, and, and doing the right thing. Sure. You know? So um, I, I applaud their efforts and, and certainly whatever any of us can do to, to support um, ethical behavior in, in schools and in the business community um, it, it's, will, will serve us all well. Absolutely. Well, that's great. Uh, and again, the club is, I, I think, you know, uh, in, in testament to... Um, to Phillips initiatives and so forth. He is one of our, our town tech students and uh, uh, he does a yeoman's job. In fact, he is actually going to be the one that's going to be doing some of the post-processing on this podcast. So great. to well, get it up there. Thank you, Philip. Yes. Uh, so the, well, that's great. Um, so, you know, next week, I think uh, we're, we're going to be doing uh, Susan's last podcast, which is on her last day, which is going to be uh, on Wednesday, the 16th and, uh, and so forth. So, uh, and again, uh, uh, she has been instrumental not only as well as you have in, in uh, sharing information, uh, you know, not only with uh, the town podcast, but also your podcast here. And I can't say it's, it's a great um, information tool to, you know, educate our, our citizenry on, on what's happening not only in the community, but also as well as in the school system. So uh, kudos to both you guys. And, uh, you know, again, we, uh, we're going to be wishing her uh, uh, a farewell next Wednesday and uh, 
sending her off into her retirement, and uh, we'll probably be having our, uh, our our next first selectman, Mr. Ryan Curley, up here yeah. and uh, introducing him and, and putting him in the barrel here. Oh, yeah. Great, yeah. <laughs> that, that'd be great. So, uh, all right, great, Phil, uh, Charles. Um, that, that, that would be super. Uh, anything else that we want to cover today? I think I think that's all of it. I'll, I'll be love, love to come back in a couple of weeks and sure. give everybody an update on how well Screen and Stay is going. And, awesome. And, of course, look forward to talking about a lot of other things besides fantastic so and again uh, uh, we're live here in the uh, town tech educational podcast studio and this is our episode number 18 of the portland school district podcast with our superintendent of school dr charles Britton. so uh, until next time thanks so much uh, and uh, get the shot get vaccinated and again we have our uh, uh, clinic on friday here at the uh, middle school so uh, for our ages Five to 11. Five to 11. So uh, be there or be square. So we'll see you soon. Thanks so much. This podcast was produced by the Town Tech Educational Partnership Program, which is a partnership between Portland High School and the Portland Town Hall. If you're looking to start a podcast for your business or organization, check out towntech.org forward slash podcast to learn more.